Welcome to Sonny's, the car wash factory. I'm Bob Fox with Car Wash College. Sonny's belt conveyor is designed to be self-cleaning, but like every piece of equipment in your tunnel, it'll last longer and perform more reliably when it's kept free from grit and debris. Dirt may seem harmless, but it's the leading cause of premature wear. Today we're in North Canton, Ohio at one of the Sergeant Clean locations. The team here was kind enough to let us film the process and share some best practices for cleaning and maintaining your belts correctly. And no, I won't be doing the maintenance myself. I know my limitations. That's why I brought along two of Car Wash College's top instructors, Mr. Scott Utley and Mr. Tyler Davidson, to show you exactly how it's done. Now, let's get started. Tools required. Safety glasses, gloves, impact gun, three quarter inch socket, 7 16th wrench, SAE Allen keys, six, eight or 10 millimeter socket, depending on the size of the motor, small screwdriver or pick for separating the belt, fire clamps for separating the belt, a minimum of four C clamps for holding the belt once it is separated, and a pressure washer with a J hook. Tyler at Sergeant Clean, we got about 130 foot of flat belt conveyor that we need to tear it apart and get it cleaned out. What's the first step? So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lock out, tag out our uh, our conveyor as well as our main, just so nothing starts while we're working in here. Uh, and then we're gonna go around and we're gonna strip all of the perimeter grating and all of the center grating so we've got access to everything. And then we're gonna uh, get after it, start cleaning, and we're gonna start cleaning down at the exit end there. All right, let's do it. Perfect. All right, Tyler, we got all the grading removed. We got the cover plate off of the motor. Yes, sir. Now what are we doing? Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the veneer plates off of the exit and the entrance and the drive on and drive off plates are the same places. We're gonna remove those guys. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna set up a few C-clamps uh, along the bottom of the conveyor so that we can set up our fire clamps on top and actually split the belt and then release the fire clamps so that we can swing the belt one way or the other and not actually lose that underneath of the, the conveyor. So What happens if we lose it underneath the conveyor? If we lose it underneath of the conveyor, we're probably in for another hour or so. We're trying to drag that sucker up by hand and that's something we don't want to do. So we want to make sure that it's really nice and secure. Got it. Put the fire clamp, put the clamps in. You got it. So right now we're just setting up the fire clamps, which if you actually check out a couple of videos on the college, we've got a few on how to actually set these up, but basically we're just setting them up far enough so that we can tighten and bring a little slack out of the conveyor so that we can separate it and get to the plates underneath. So we're tightening just until we get that little tent we're looking for. And now that we've got the belt separated and some tension off of it, we're gonna throw our C-clamps on the first I-beam in from the exit on the bottom of the belt and first I-beam in from the entrance on the bottom of the belt. And we're just gonna clamp this guy. You can leave that one off, my friend. We're gonna use that one on the other side and then clamping to the belt support plate, the belt to the belt support plate which the weight of the belt should keep this from actually sliding off. This one's just redundancy because we don't, again, don't want to be picking this up off the ground. Now that we've got our belt split there, we're just going to bring the slack off of the sprockets. It's going to want to spring a little bit. So just be careful where your fingers are placed. And we're just going to let it drop until it actually hits the ground here, just below the drive frame. And then once the slack pulls up there, I can kind of lay the rest of the belt across the exit way here. Um, and then just so that we're completely disengaged from the sprockets so that we can actually spin the fan blade and get a good clean on the whole barrel of sprockets. So just gonna slowly. Nicely disengaged from the sprockets. We're not gonna catch anything if we wanna rotate this. 
And that's pretty much it. We're gonna do the same thing over on the passenger side. All right, Tyler, you got the belt split. You got it peeled all the way back halfway. Everything's exposed. Now what? You got it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle down by the drive. We're gonna pull our motor cover off of the fan uh, so that we can spin that fan blade so that we can actually rotate the sprockets. We can get a full clean on the sprockets just so we can make sure that the dirt doesn't build up on there and shear off the tips of the sprockets. Uh, we're also just gonna have a look at the bearings while we're in there and making sure we're not spraying in around the seals on the bores of, of, the, of the gearbox as well as on the seals of the bearings. And then we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning the cleaning the carryway. All right, let's get after it. All right. All right, so we're just gonna spray down these sprockets and then we're gonna rotate the fan so that we can get the next part of the sprockets. Again, making sure we're not spraying directly in here at the seal of the bearing or directly in here at the seal of the gearbox. You look a little worse for wear from the last time that we were over here talking. I do, I'm gaining weight, but I think it's mostly dirt. All right, so we rinsed down the sprockets. What all did we do in there? So basically we just sprayed off the top portion of the sprockets and we rotated the fan on the motor so that we could get the rest of the sprockets. And we basically just did that until we got 360 degrees. So that's nice and clean. We sprayed off a portion of the actual drive frame itself. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle the carryway. We're gonna get in up underneath to get the structural grating. Um, and we're gonna get all that stuff kind of out that's built up underneath. Then we're gonna spray down through the slots and the wear plates to clear all that out, get all the stuff that we've blown up through the wear plates off the top. And then we're just gonna spray everything that's now built up on the, the, the drip trays down into the center of the trench. Cool. All right, Tyler, we got it all cleaned up. Carryways are clean, underneath clean. What are we gonna do now? You got it. So once we've got the carryway clean, drip trays clean, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reconnect the actual belt, uh, and then we're gonna tackle some of the manifolds, the top belt spray uh, manifold, the sprocket rinse manifold, and the belt under spray rinse manifold. Uh, and then once we've got that tackled, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna head down to the idler end and just do the same thing we did down here with our sprockets, but just on our idler drums. All right, cool. We got the manifold cleaned out. I hear water flowing. You got it. That's a good sign. It's definitely a good sign. What's next? Uh, so once we've got the manifolds running, we've got all that water coming up and washing that belt. We're just gonna close everything back in and we're gonna go ahead and test a couple of cars just so we make sure that everything went, to bed, uh, went together properly and we don't have any issues that we need to fix before we leave. All right. You got a little bit dirty doing this. That uh, seems to be a dirty job. Definitely. This is uh, something that uh, Mike Rowe probably should come in and inspect. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you getting down in there and taking care of this for our customer and getting this thing cleaned out and getting it operating properly. Anytime. And there you have it. Just follow those simple steps and your belt's gonna give you a much longer life expectancy. I'd like to thank the staff at Sergeant Clean for allowing us to film here. And as always, good luck and good washing. Deep cleaning steps. Remove debris from the conveyor area. Remove all FRP cover panels. 
split the belts, and pull back to expose wear plates. Utilizing a pressure washer with a J-hook recommended, wash the underside of the carry wag. Remove motor and gearbox cover and wash down couplings and motor and gearbox. No direct water pressure on the seals, however. Split the belt at the drive end, peel back from sprockets and wash down all sprockets and couplers. Split the belt at idler end, peel back from the idler rollers and wash down the idler rollers. Flush flow wrench system if installed, ensuring all nozzles are clear of debris. Using the pressure washer, wash down all wear plates and ensure all dirt and evacuation slots are clear. Spray down all top level surfaces to remove any dirt from the carryway area. Wash down all drip trays with a pressure washer. Clean out pit thoroughly to prevent sludge buildup. Daily maintenance. Remove all debris from the conveyor area. Spray down all surfaces to remove dirt from the carryway area. Spray through side grating to rinse drip trays. While you're in there and do some inspection, Items of note, test all emergency stop buttons. Visually check the belt's tracking. Listen for any unusual noises. Look for any broken links or exposed belt pins. Ensure flow lube is functional. Ensure rinse strainer is clear of debris. Ensure rinse system is functioning. Weekly maintenance. Remove FRP panels to spray down drip trays and clear debris from the trench. Spray underside of the carryway using J-hook pressure washer nozzle. Remove motor and gearbox cover and spray down motor and gearbox and couplings with no direct spray on the seals. Items of note, check couplers for any signs of damage. Grease the drive shaft couplers. Check for oil leakage from the gearbox. Check cantonary sag. Monthly maintenance. Wash down the sprockets with the belt separated. Wash down the idler rollers and bearings with the belt separated. Clean and pressure wash wear plates ensuring dirt evacuation slots are clean. Flush flow rinse system. Cleaning nozzles and flutter bar orifices are required. Clean out pits thoroughly to prevent sludge buildup. Items of note, inspect sprocket teeth for wear or damage. Inspect wear plates, check thickness and record results. Check flow loop system connections for damage and ensure lines are not kinked or damaged. Check for lines of oil leakage from the gearbox. Check operation of flow rinse system if installed, ensuring all nozzles are free of debris. Inspect return rollers, side wheels, and side rollers for signs of wear. Ensure all belt end lock retention clips are installed and fully seated. Six month maintenance. Change the oil. The first oil change should be three months after initial startup, and then go to a six month rotation. Measure belt thickness in multiple locations. Record results. Remove caps from bearings and inspect for damage. Inspect major frame and structural components for corrosion and other damage. Annual inspections. Perform the flow lube recharge procedure. 